Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Retail Refresh, the show where we talk about everything to do with retail media and technology. I'm Rob, and I'll be one of your hosts for today. And I'm Sabrina, the other better host. I'm going to ignore that because I have something important on my mind. Oh, boy. Okay, what is it this time? All right. So, you know, during the height of COVID, a lot of stores turned their aisles into one way only things. It was kind of annoying at first, but then you gradually began to rely on that order being imposed upon the world. But then things started to open back up and stores stopped having those directional requirements and suddenly shoppers are impossible to predict and you never know which way to head down the aisle for peak efficiency and moving through the store and you begin to wonder how to make sense of reality anymore no rob i i really i have no idea what you're talking about are you okay yeah i'm fine i just wish i had more insight into how exactly people move their carts through stores you know Well, I actually have some good news for you. So on today's episode, we're going to be talking to Jorge Bueno, the CEO of Shopper Motion, and they do exactly what you're talking about, tracking paths that carts take through the stores, only they do it to help retailers better understand their shoppers and deploy more effective retail media, not so much to help you with your very specific existential crisis. That's uh, it's probably a better business model. Yeah. Yeah, let me do a proper intro here. So Jorge Bueno is the CEO of Shopper Motion. He was named to the MIT Technology Review List of Innovators under 35 in 2015, holds a PhD in robotics from the University Carlos III of Madrid, and is a lecturer on the topics of business analytics, neural networks, in-store marketing, and future technologies. Jorge, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's so good to have you on. So Shopper Motion is a a retail analytics platform. To get us started and give us some context, can you give us a quick overview of what it is exactly that you do? All right. Um, So uh, we've been in the market for the last 10 years, and we are a business intelligence company focused in the retail space, um, mainly in the grocery retail space. And basically what we do is we help global retailers and brands to have a better understanding of the customer's behavior in their physical stores. Uh, We provide them with data and with analytics so that they can improve their operations, strategic and marketing decisions. I think that ties in well to something I wanted to ask you. You know, one of the things that we stress to our retail partners is that the first party data collected by these retailers can be incredibly powerful. And in a recent article you published on LinkedIn, uh, you were talking about this. You said that many retailers today still broadcast the same ads at the same time across all their in-store screens because they don't have the data to be more targeted. What kinds of opportunities are being missed out on when this happens? Yeah, um, that's one of the first things that struck us when um, when we were starting on the retail media space. Uh, We came from the in-store analytics for these 10 years, and we lately have been focused on the retail media. one of the things that we are still seeing on, in the stores is that all these negotiations about the campaigns are done in packages. Uh, that is, the brands are saying, hey, we want to have these wigs, these promotions in these uh, TVs, these screens in the stores. But there is no clue about how to segment those screens, how to segment these audiences in the store. And that uh, it's it's basically a big problem for the retailers because the only way they have to display those ads is by running them in all the streets at once. Um, So we were thinking, hey, what if we were able to segment these differentiate those screens for different types of uh, demographics or for different types of segments of customers so that you can put the right ad in the right screen? And that gives them uh, a lot of flexibility and obviously much more uh, free slots in the screens that they can monetize. So I'm wondering, sorry, if I can just jump in with a follow up to that. Um, The retailers you've shown this to like the possibilities, what is their reaction when they see what is possible when you do things in this kind of data-driven way? Well, uh, it's it's kind of, uh, it, it comes over from the same part is, hey, do you put the same ads, do you run the same ads in your in your e-commerce? Obviously not, no? you dynamically change them based on the actual customer that is visiting this, this website or the, the area in the website where it is located, right? So this is the same offline. Um, you should have the possibility to be able to target different ads on different screens uh, for different audiences, right? And that is basically what we're enabling here. So let's maybe touch on that. You said audience segmentation before. Um, So obviously you need data to be able to do this well. So can you maybe talk a bit about some of the common segments you see with in-store retail media and what the best way for a retailer to define their own segments would be? 
Sure. So um, basically, our technology enables us to track the full path of the customer from the entrance to the checkout, right? Um, so that means that we get the full experience of the customer as they are in the store. We know what is the shopping tool that they're using, uh, and we know the type of shopping mission uh, that they are doing. Basically, we segment into four different shopping missions based on, for instance, uh, stock up shopping missions, big visits to the store where you, you do a big purchase to stock up your refrigerator, right? Fill in when there is a mixture of canned food with fresh food, daily uh, uh, daily purchase, right? When you go and pick some milk, come from ready to eat uh, food or fresh food from uh, from the producer. Yeah. Or urgent items. I want just to pick a sandwich and, and a drink and go home, right? So we are able to get uh, uh, from a statistic analysis this type of shopping missions. And therefore, we are now able to say, hey, you should run this ad on those screens uh, where shopping mission is of a stock up because it's a big uh, a big product or a big format product. So you want to make sure that customers with a big shopping tool, a large cart, for instance, uh, see this ad, right? Uh, you know, what's this ad? So, you can do that. Uh, you can actually segment them by uh, shopping tool, by length of the journey. It's a long trip or a short trip in the store, by shopping mission, or by demographics. Um, there are various ways to, to, you know, to, to deep into the analysis of the segmentation of those screens. I feel like my segmentation would be, she really likes potato chips and ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a similar boat. Um, <laughs> I think so that that's all really important context for, you know, kind of establishing the, you know, the parameters of a media campaign, understanding your audience. But I think that a lot of retailers would then want to be able to go to next step, right? So I'm putting up these ads. Can I tie the display of this content to an eventual purchase? Um, I think that probably people in the offline media space don't understand what's possible and maybe are surprised by how good the attribution can be with an in-store environment. So to compare with, you know, an online retail journey where you can follow a user quite precisely, how close can brick and mortar retailers get to understanding the impact of the ads that they're displaying in their stores on eventual purchases? Actually, we can do that very, very much likely in, in the e-commerce um, because we have the full path. Uh, we know how much traffic you got in the aisle where the TV is displayed, you know, in, the, in the direction where the TV is displayed. Uh, we know how much traffic you're receiving, how many impressions you're receiving in the aisle moving in, uh, towards the direction of the TV. We can actually segment the area around the TV based on the uh, screen size, for instance. No? Um, we know how many uh, view the ad. Uh, it's not like a real view. Like online, we don't know exactly if you saw the ad, but we know that uh, you were in front of the TV on the viewport where the ad was displayed, right? We can do the same offline. We know that you were in this range area where you are looking at uh, the direction in the screen or moving towards the screen so that you can count as a viewer, right? We know if you click offline, because we know that from that uh, area, you went into the category uh, where the product is, is displayed from the ad, right? So we know that you move into that direction. And we know that you convert it because we can link this journey with your Excel ticket at the POS so that we know if that product was put on that basket, you know? So we get this, the exact same levels of granularity that you get online, but in, in the physical store. So we're talking a lot about data and what we can gather with, with shopper motion and privacy tends to be an important part of conversations around data. I think especially with something like this, there might be a concern maybe about a shopper being monitored inside a store. So how should in-store data collection be handled to ensure shoppers can maintain their full privacy? Good. Uh, that, that's actually a very good point. Um, there, there are different levels of granularity here. Uh, as a general rule, you can analyze the, the performance of your media campaigns without really uh, um, interacting or with, uh, with an ID of a customer. You know you know how much traffic you got in front of the promotion, how many uh, saw the ad, how many went to the category, how many bought it. You can segment by demographics, but there is no way to link that information to a certain customer as we do online, right? So that's one level. This is... Um, this is kind of the baseline of the analysis. It's 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 anonymous, so there is no no you know privacy concerns there because it's just a campaign like measuring any other data that you have in store. Now, if you want to go back to that customer and retarget the customer, you need to pinpoint that analysis, that data to that particular customer. And in those scenarios, you need the customer concern if you want to comply with the GDPR and all these new laws that are in the U.S. are emerging now, right, in Washington and in California. So. The only way to do that is asking the customer to allow them to be tracked, right? As they do online in any e-commerce. I mean, when you, you sign up with the license that you, you apply in online when you create your royalty card, uh, basically you are accepting that they will track and, and collect this data for you. 
So you should do the same offline. It's, it might be something new for us here because it's we've never seen this before, but I'm sure that in the next five, 10 years, everyone will be signing up and the conditions will be, I'm allowing you know this retailer to you know use my data online and offline, you know, extend it to the offline. Actually with Amazon Go, that's where they decided to go, the, the way they decided to go. It's to extend the license of the Amazon Prime to, to their own stores, right? So, and then if that happens, obviously the customer is accepting the contact, but that opens also a new possibility, and it's this targeted communication uh, between the retailer and the brand and the uh, sorry and, and the customer in a very very granular way. You know, I'm, I'm just giving you a few examples here. Obviously, I could see that Sabrina went into the uh, chips area, uh, the potato chips area. And you were looking for one, uh, but maybe you didn't convert there. So the retailer will know this and will be able to retarget you back or allow brands to retarget you back within a certain brand. You know. I don't think there's a world where I go to the chip aisle and can actually have that self-discipline and not picking up. But if I'm retargeted, I'm definitely making my way back there. That's for sure. Conversion 100%. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, I like that you were talking about kind of the online offline uh, journey there. You know, we find something, you know, about in-store digital is really exciting to us is that you can connect it with online retail media as well. Um, what kind of potential are you seeing there and what, do you think retailers need to do to make a good kind of online and brick and mortar retail media journey uh, possible for themselves and for their buyers? Right. So obviously the potential here is when you connect all these data that you are uh, you know, producing offline into the retail media network, because that means that you can start creating new audiences based on brands could create audiences based on certain uh, things that happen in the store. For instance, you may want to run an ad on customers that spend more than 20 seconds in my category without buying, or customers that uh, visit my category three times this week, or customers that were using this shopping tool and entering my category before going to another one. This type of segmentation could be done here and therefore could be leveraged in the retail media network, making very more precise um, you know, um, target uh, communications in the stores based on the customer's behavior. Right? So. Yeah, this is where we are. We're looking now at uh, the big players of, you know, Walmart Connect, uh, retail, uh, Citrus, uh, the big tech players, you know, building these retail media networks and and, um, and seeing how can we, you know, produce the same APIs or the same uh, data structure so that it's seamless, the integration between, between us and them. Yeah. So we typically like to ask our guests a fun question, and it would be, if you had an idea for a cool in-store digital media campaign, what would that idea or that campaign look like? And because we're talking about shopper analytics, you can get bonus points if this campaign incorporates some sort of shopper analytics. <laughs> well, um, yeah. I I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, fun, I mean, not, well, fun, uh, very uh, ways, uh, very good ways to apply these shopper insights and analytics in the store. Uh, the other day I was talking with um, a customer, uh, a, a customer analytics uh, leader in, in one of the largest retailers here in Europe, and they were concerned that they're measuring this NPS, uh, you know, the, the how is the, uh, the mood of the customer when they visit the store and linking it with the ticket, right? And, they, and we were discussing about, hey, how cool would it be to measure the waiting time for a customer and linking that information uh, with the actual screens in the area, in the waiting, you know, in the waiting area, and also with the actual customer so that you can send back, you know, a gift. Hey, you, and we know you've been waiting more than five minutes today and I'm sending you this, this particular token, you know? So there is a lot of, you know, technology there that enables this improvement of the customer experience in the store and obviously enables the, the media there. Um, that, that is still uh, to be done and hopefully we can be there. It's a good idea. Yeah, I think it's a great, uh, it's also just a great point. You know, when we talk about retail media, often we talk about advertising and kind of content in the stores, but just as much we're seeing retailers are really concerned with shopper experience. And this is a great kind of way to improve shopper experience, especially when you're basing your content strategy off of, you know, good insights pulled from data, like you can get with your platform. So yeah, it's a good, good thing to bring up, I think. <laughs> um, that's really most of what we had in mind for our conversation today. Do you have any final thoughts that you'd want to share with the audience about what we were talking about today or about your platform? Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 uh, I'm really excited to be honest on where we are right now uh, in terms of retail media. Uh, obviously the retail media networks space just 
you know, skyrocket the last couple of years, three, four years. And I'm seeing how um, offline is now getting even more uh, more interest in this in this uh, in this world. Right. Uh, everyone obviously is starting the e-commerce part, but very soon they are like looking at the, st- at the store. So the footprint say, hey, we have this massive, uh, you know, footprint. Uh, we have to use that. And how can we connect it and optimize all the resources that we got in the stores? Right. And I'm really, really excited. Um, we are already working with some of the largest retailers in the world and, and exploring with others, uh, the largest too, uh, all these possibilities. And it's really fun to see how we are building something that is new for for, all, for everyone. Um, you, you you cannot, you know, you know, you don't go every day to your job and say, hey, we're doing something new here and we're inventing things. Uh, and, and this is really exciting. So, um, yeah, I think that this is a great moment for us. Uh, and I'm really loving it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so if people want to connect with you or, you know, keep up with what Shop Promotion is doing, where are the best places for them to go to do that? Uh, they should send us an email. Uh, they could send to my personal email if they want to. Uh, shout out to Jorge, J-O-R-G-E, at showpromotion.com or send it to our team to hello at showpromotion.com. Those are the two easiest way to go. Or go to showpromotion.com and they, they have an email there, yeah. Fantastic. I also just recommend people uh, follow Jorge on LinkedIn. He posts some amazing content there about retail uh, and retail media specifically. And I uh, always love seeing his articles pop up in my feed. Um, thank so yeah, Jorge, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciated your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jotin. Thank you very much. See you soon. Awesome. All right. So that's it for today. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. So make sure you come back then to see what else we have in store for you. <laughs>